to many Americans back home, the only reference to the Korean War they know is the 70s sitcom, MASH, show actually targeted more at the Vietnam War than the Korean. You know, the United States is used to winning wars, not having uh, stalemates and so forth. And to think that we fought for approximately three years and ended up basically where we started. Doesn't seem right, doesn't seem just, doesn't seem equitable. But the fact that these veterans never received any parades or credit doesn't bother them so much. What does is the fact that the war they fought, the war that cost them so many friends, is still unresolved. It's hard to believe it, that that's the enemy right there whom we're looking at. I don't have any hate for them. It's just sad that 50 years later that we can't walk over there and they can't walk over here. And, um, I always wanted, was hoping that someday they would actually settle this thing and uh, could actually walk those hills again where we fought. And of course, now they're all off limits, so we may get to see them from a the distance. That's as close as we're ever going to get. That divide still stands, still separates the peninsula at the 38th parallel, at about the same line as before the war before America lost over 33,000 young lives in a war that ended in stalemate and ignominy. The war that lasted between 1950 and 53 may be forgotten to many Americans, but to Koreans, it's anything but. This is still a militarized country, still divided by this tense line. And in many ways, this is still a war zone. The document signed at Penmunjong 50 years ago is an armistice agreement, not a peace accord. And so soldiers still man the line, cautiously watching one another, and with good reason. Since 1953, over 350 U.S. and South Korean soldiers have died in the demilitarized zone that separates the two countries. Tanks still patrol these hills. Defenses still ring the 150-mile-long border. The U.S. has over 35,000 troops here conducting live-fire exercises and reminding North Korea of America's commitment to the peninsula. That commitment has only become more acute with the current crisis, as North Korea, now dubbed part of the axis of evil, develops a nuclear weapons program. For the men who know, the prospect of other young men coming here, fighting and dying is terrifying and needs to be avoided by every means of mediation available. It's got to be the United Nations. Uh, the first time when I saw two, a Chinese man and a boy dead in front of my machine gun, it said, I didn't, I don't think they wanted to be here any more than I did. I think I'm gonna rest much easier now. These men are not shrinking violets. They know what it means to fight and to die. It is for this reason they've returned, to mark the spots where they lost comrades in arms, unmarked graves in the middle of foreign fields. And by doing so, they hope to make a peace of their own. But the fact remains, this war changed them forever, took something from them that they will never get back, dealt them wounds that have never fully healed. Remember the pain, some of the horror, and of course the hardships, and the cold, mainly you remember your friends. Give me a break for that. And in some small way, it is a chance for many of them to say goodbye to a war that many still don't know ever happened. To say goodbye, but not to forget. God rest them all, especially those guys that died. <laughs> Phil Itner for Nightline in Seoul, Korea. How far can North Korea go before the U.S. will feel it has to act? That conversation when we come back.